Hey everybody, Beyond You 89 here, bringing you another episode of Coal Creek Park, where today we're going to go ahead and try to wrap up the Grizzly Floorless Coaster area as a whole. So uh, to get started on that, I decided to uh, try and sculpt a grizzly bear out of the rock pieces in the game. Um, I took inspiration for this from Disney's California Adventure. It's pretty obvious, actually, if you've been there or seen pictures of the area uh, where I'm taking inspiration from. But yeah, it's a, uh, there's a ride. It's a river raft ride in Disney's California Adventure in California uh, um, that uh, has a giant grizzly bear sculpture shooting out the middle of it and um, I've never personally sculpted in real life or planet coaster for that matter so um, I wasn't about to try and recreate from memory um, anything like that I wasn't about to just imagine a grizzly bear and then poof bam I can make it no that's that's not gonna happen for me um, so I went ahead and yeah just uh, pulled a picture up on my phone of the grizzly bear attraction there and uh, just modeled it after that and uh, I got pretty close um, the kept kind of coming out like a wolf more than anything um, but I think I kind of tied it in roped it in if you will and um, it came out uh, pretty pretty decent sure um, I did go ahead and upload this I made it a building the whole structure I, I went ahead and uploaded it on the steam workshop I will put a link to my steam workshop in the description area below so if you want to check this out put it in your park go for it or see any of the other things that i have built in coal creek park that are on the workshop go ahead and check those out so um yeah and before i get too deep into this video i definitely wanted to give out the biggest shout out ever to geekism or sir john t uh for his amazing video um showcasing not just my park but a lot of other fantastic uh smaller builders that um you know are just not really getting the recognition i guess around the community so it's really great that uh you know someone with his um stature in the youtube world if you will you know is uh giving back and uh, showcasing where what he likes to watch and uh i was fortunate enough to be included in that so uh i'm sure many of my new subscribers which welcome to all of you uh came here through him so again thank you so so much to you sir i uh I'm indebted to your services and uh, again to all the new people who uh, came here through geekism welcome i appreciate you very much and uh, i appreciate all of your comments and uh likes and all that stuff and um yeah i've been really uh taking into consideration uh everything that you guys have been saying as far as the production side of things go and um yeah i'm really trying to make these videos better and better every single time that i can and i uh, appreciate your patience and feedback always but uh, why don't we talk about what's going on in the video right um yeah i'm just basically still wrapping up the uh sculpture here of the grizzly bear and then we're going to kind of go into decorating the entire back half of this ride and the queue line and um yeah just really tying the whole place together here and um to do that i mean we kind of skipped ahead here i uh i did a lot of this in the live stream if you're not following me on uh twitch uh go ahead and shoot over there i do a lot of uh live streaming of uh, some of the nits and bits as i like to call them where they kind of uh you don't need to see me placing rocks in a youtube video you get it. <laughs> I put rocks down there. I think I highlighted over the section there was close to 2000 something and just like rocks and bushes and trees alone as far as pieces go. So and that's not even including the station building or anything else. So yeah, it took a while. It didn't take nearly as long because again, I think I've mentioned this in previous videos. There is a uh, workshop rock item on the workshop if you type in like rocks it basically comes up right away it's a ginormous collection of alpine rocks deciduous rocks tropical rocks so i always put those down use the multi-select tool and just use those to cover large areas of uh um yeah that need a lot of rocks basically so please if you don't if you're not subscribed to that i'll try and remember to link it down below but you don't need to be placing rocks individually in a large area if you, need, you don't need to be clicking a couple thousand times to place a lot of rocks <laughs> there's easier ways around it folks so um but yeah that's pretty much what we did back there just to make it feel uh, real natural real rugged like you're you want to i wanted the guests to feel like they were you know out in the middle of nowhere even though they're right in the middle of a theme park of course so uh that was the inspiration for the back half there and uh the queue line here and i think i've mentioned in uh previous videos that uh i wanted to feel like you were kind of walking through the wilderness there and uh, kind of passing by some just a few structures very rugged structures very abandoned looking if you will um and uh it doesn't really tie into the story which oh i guess i should maybe talk about the story a little bit right uh it's not there's not really much of a story it's your simple cut and dry 
uh, here's a really big roller coaster, and um, sure, you're being chased by a bear. Ah, there you go. There's your inspiration. There's your story. Be be riveted. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's that's basically it. And the queue has a lot, not a lot to do with it. I didn't. I did kind of did this on purpose. Um, I just wanted it to be your stand up thrill ride attraction that has some decent theming around it, or it's not even decent theming. It's more like the park. In my mind side, the park played off of the train that they were given. Um, again, in previous episodes, I've mentioned that I'm kind of modeling this off of a Dollywood, Kennywood, um, again, Colorado Adventure Park. And um, yeah, so I mean, a lot of the rocks that I placed down, in my mind's eye, it wasn't the park investing in like, you know, thousands of boulders, because that would realistically take up a lot of man hours, a lot of man time, a lot of money just in general. Uh, the idea is that the rock structures and everything were already here. They were just able to build around them, uh, the, they being the park. The park was able to build with the terrain, um, again, such as a Dollywood does or um, Silver Dollar City, what have you. Um, so yeah, that's the inspiration there. And um, yeah, this uh, structure that we're building here, this was also uh, when I was looking up the grizzly bear attraction at California Adventure, uh, another structure kept popping up with the grizzly bear and it was this, um, what I believe I'd just call a um, ranger station, danger ranger, uh, right, so it's just like a normal little ranger station and I had this open plot here, I could have very easy, easily put a few rocks down, uh, a, few, a tree or two, but I felt like the area just needed just a little bit more bulkiness to it, a little, like nice little structure. And it really tied the whole area together there. So nothing too complicated here. And um, just something else I wanted to point out. I think somewhere here you're going to see me put down an archer. And I know I've uh, seen on Twitter and uh, different discords, a lot of people ask um, builders, why do they always put down the archers or, you know, the little uh, animatronics. And I know a lot of people have explained this before. So I know some of you are going to just bang your head like, oh my gosh, everyone should know this. But there's a lot of new players, especially with the 1.4 update. I did notice uh, through Steam sales and whatnot that Planet Coaster got a big bump in players. So if you are a new player and you found this video, welcome. Hello. We welcome you with open arms. But Anyways, where am I going? <laughs> um, yeah, the, the little animatronics that people put down are for scale. Uh, a lot of the items, a lot, let's just say most of the items in Planet Coaster are of the bigger nature. So if you are trying to build to scale, to the peep scale that is, um, the archers or other small animatronics kind of uh, are very similar to the height and uh, stature of the guests. So a lot of builders will use that as a scale modeler. And I am totally missing one of my favorite parts of this build, which was the lighting. Ah, <laughs> but uh, no, that was one of my favorite parts because I've not really been able to do lighting in this game because I, some of you know from previous episodes, I've had a potato of a computer up until very recently. So whenever I put down a light in, or try to do lighting that, that is, my computer would just basically just be like, why are you doing this? Stop. And I, I, I just couldn't do it. It was so depressing. <laughs> so I'm finally able to mess with some lighting and oh my gosh, it's really fun to do lighting in this game, I have to say. Um, the way that the colors combine really well, and I, I've seen this through other people's videos, how well the lighting system is, but actually being able to do hands-on and can, you know, combine your blues and greens to make different, you know, just use the color spectrums. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun and uh, I also built this little um, rustic light structure here I call it a rope light structure uh, but uh, I, I took this uh, off of Google I literally I think typed in rustic light and it was one of the it was like on the third or fourth row and it was a modeled picture it shoot, you could have it could have been for planet coaster some concept drawing it looked just like from it but it was perfect so I went ahead and made that and uh, I think I threw that on the workshop as well so if you're looking for a nice rustic lamp uh, go ahead and snag that I know uh, before I built it I was kind of looking around the workshop for something kind of like it but I couldn't really find it there's some really good um, workshop items as far as lamps go on the workshop especially rustic ones but I didn't find one that per se had the rustic feel I was looking for, where it kind of had this rope uh, holding a light kind of thing. So that's why I was just like, well, you know what? I'll make it myself, right? So, um, but uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of workshop items in this park. I think, 
Ooh, I'm trying to think like on hand. Like I literally didn't plan on talking about this. I think I have maybe two or three items and I will try and remember. And then one of the big items is the fences. And someone actually noted on how much they liked the fence that I use in this park. And that's a workshop item. It's a very simple item, but it's definitely a workshop item. But uh, anyways, where are we going? I'm, I'm totally off track of anything I want to talk about. Oh my goodness. Especially with the new 1.4 update out, I wanted to talk about specifically the scenario editor. Not that I'm going to make any scenarios. That's not my bag, man. That's not my game. Um, but I will be wanting to possibly start some Let's Play series through some of your guys' and gals' fantastic scenarios that you build. So I know that there's already been some really, really great ones out, especially uh, one in particular that's been passed around the community is uh, by Billy MF Mays. I'll let you decide what the MF stands for. <laughs> but um, no, he made a fantastic one, and I think a lot of you probably know already about it, um, where it's basically you run a illegitimate fairground in the middle of a parking lot for six months. I believe it's six months. I'm going off memory here because that's how prepared I am. And uh, yeah, you basically just have to make, you know, a quick buck, an illegitimate fairground. I just think that that's so funny and so perfect. I kind of always envision having a tycoon theme park game like this where you literally start in like a grass field or a parking lot and kind of work your way up from that so like you can afford like you know a rickety ferris wheel and then you make a few cents off that and then you can upgrade in there and there but anyways point being uh, i'll put a link to, i'll definitely put a link to that uh scenario down below check that one out but i want to play some of your scenarios so definitely uh give me some of your favorite ones or ones that i should be uh looking out for there and um let's see what else i want to uh, touch on what we're doing here in the video where are we at i should probably watch what i'm doing right <laughs> it's uh it's just a lot of little detail work here oh this is something i want to touch on the fencing here um i did have a purpose between um i used two different fences here i use this kind of rickety themed fence from the spoopy pack uh, spooky, spoopy, yeah, you pick whichever one. Um, I do that on purpose because that's the themed fence on the inside because there is no immediate danger on that side of the fence. So when you see me putting that down, I'll explain what I mean by danger. Um, that's purposeful. That's a purposeful themed fence that people can get around or jump over um, in the game, theoretically, in real life. On the other side, I use a stone wall fence on purpose again because that between the queue line and them is nothing else but the track. I hope I'm making sense here. <laughs> I'm trying to rationalize my thoughts here. Um, but anyways, there's track between them and the queue, so they would have to use a stone wall to kind of keep guests out of that area, irregardless of theming and whatnot. So hopefully that made somewhat of sense. But uh, I'll uh, go ahead and wrap up my ramblings here as the video is beginning to uh, come to a close. Be sure you stick around to the uh, very end here as I'm going to have some nice cinematics of the Grizzly area. And uh, we're going to go ahead and take a ride on the Grizzly at nighttime. So I believe this is our first on-ride view of the Grizzly and uh, the nighttime experience. Uh, it's, this is definitely a coaster you want to ride at nighttime with the lights the way that they are. Uh, let's just say that the park poured all of its budget into the lighting, right? So, um, but yeah, so stick around for that. And uh, again, thank you everyone uh, for subscribing, liking, all the fun stuff. It was uh, definitely a treat and a joy again to see uh, me featured on Geekism's channel. And again, thank you, sir, very, very much. Very much appreciate it. And uh, yeah, until the next time, guys, I will see you then and have a good one.